Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, um, I got a video where I'm explaining how to do cooldowns and abilities and stuff. Because I get, the, I do get this question a lot and stuff. I, I really thought it was a simple thing uh, that people could figure out, but um, but I guess it might be a little confusing and stuff. Because since I do a lot of skills, how to make basic skills and abilities videos, people want to know how to, how you can implement cooldowns and stuff. So I'm basically here just to show you guys how it would work and stuff. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so implementing a cooldown for an ability is honestly very simple. So you could do it honestly i'm not really sure necessarily what's the best way to do it whether it be locally or on the server you could do it both lo you could do and uh, not both you could do either on the on the client side or the server side so on the local side so usually the way it works in ability you press a key bind so let's go ahead and let me just set let me just set this up you guys don't necessarily have to type this because you guys this is more so like a me just showing you something so you could do local uis is equal to game get service user input service right so say uis.input begin connect function in parentheses input process right and then i want to set up a function to trigger like pretty much it triggers the remote event whenever a player presses the e key so if input that user input type is equal to m that user input type dot keyboard and input dot key code is m dot key code dot e and process is equal to false enter right so this means the ability is being triggered so I go ahead and insert a remote event just simply just to just demonstrate for you guys. So then I get the remote event. Local remote event is equal to gain the replicated storage with your child remote event. So I fire the remote event, fire server, right? I'm triggering the ability. Now, um one way one way I could think of because honestly I didn't prepare for the I didn't prepare for this video. I'm just going off like just top of my head type thing. So you could have a cooldown variable. I've shown I've shown that in another video. You could just have a cooldown variable, like a cooldown variable. So cooldown is set to false by default, right? You could have that. And then what you could do is when, and then what you could do is you could add into, you could say, and cooldown is equal to false, right? So pretty much if cooldown is equal to false, what you could do is you could go right here and then you could say cooldown is set to true. Then at the end of your function, like, 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 cause I don't know, maybe you need to get the player's mouse position and send that over and stuff like that. At the end of the function, you could do task that way put your duration here so say if you want the player to be on cooldown for five seconds then you can say cooldown is is equal to false which means the player is now able to use the attack again this is a basic way to do a cooldown this is this is my preferred method of doing a cooldown but um i'm not sure if necessarily scripted scripters exploiters could take advantage of this though and they could just be spamming abilities and stuff and if that's the case then you probably should do it on the server side so yeah so that's one so that's one way i can think of doing it um i wouldn't recommend people doing like the script that disabled is equal to true method and stuff i wouldn't recommend doing that because assuming your game you have you optimize your game just generally you're a good scripter you would usually have you would try to fit as much stuff as you could on a script like as in you would have multiple abilities work on like working via the script so if you disable the whole script that would mean the player couldn't use any of their abilities now if that's the case where like you just want a player to be able to use one ability like every say every five seconds or thing then yeah you could just do that right you could do that now as for the server right so say we fire so we fired the remote event right let me set this back so we fire the remote event to the server right and then you want to do a cooldown on the server i've never done this honestly i'm going off the top of my head but if i were to do it um one i need to get the remote event first so remote event then remote event dot on server event connect function dlr enter so you could have a table, which you could do is you could have a table that keeps track of players who are on cooldown. You could have like local players on cooldown, on cooldown, right? Is equal to, you know, special bracket. Then you just insert, you just insert their name. And then say if you have a game like the strongest battlegrounds where you have like, there's four abilities and each individual ability has its own cooldown. You could really just have four tables. I wouldn't necessarily see a problem performance wise with that i wouldn't really see an issue with that because it's just four tables now obviously if your game has like 20 ability yeah you're probably gonna need to find another way to do it or just generally just not as much you know as much stuff but yeah you could do like four tables and stuff you could just do four tables like name is one then that two three four right and then what you could say is you could first check you could say if table dot find uh you know first you need to check the table so players on cooldown player.name definitely recommend uh using the player's username um well no you could also use the user id you could use the user id but i'd recommend using the name 
because you can like say if like you don't have access to the player's instance but you have access to the character you can get the character the character's name or just you, you conveniently have the character available so you can just get the character rather than having to retrieve the player from the character so yeah so if table.find this pretty much means if the player's name is uh what's it called if the player's name is found within the table right you could say print player is on cooldown now you could say else if not table that find players on cooldown player name which means if the player's name is not found in the table which means they are not on cooldown print player not on cooldown and if they are not on the on cooldown then you could say table dot insert in the table players on cooldown player that name right and then uh, let me delete this i don't want to confuse you right because obviously there would be no point to have like both of these like if you, if you like if you have a remote like if you have a cooldown on the server side, it would it would make sense to have one on the client side as well, right? So here's how this will work: if the name is found in the table, there won't be any attack. But if there is, player 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 is not on cooldown, and then we can and we can feel free to attack. Just like I said on the local script, um, at the end of the function, you would want to have you would want to have like a you'd want to have like a, a task that way. Then for however long you want the player to be on cooldown for after the attack is finished so say like five seconds then you could say table dot remove players on cooldown table dot find players on cooldown player dot name that will remove them from the table right and then and then yeah you can use print statements to really test this stuff like if you don't really understand how this works i recommend using print statements it really would help it really would it really helps people so, so if i press the e key right wait i'm confused I didn't why didn't it work e and oh i forgot to remove this on my fault i forgot to remove this but yeah so yeah i would recommend using um print statements and stuff like if you don't really understand it all that much especially tables if tables are confusing to you i recommend using print statements that can definitely help you understand stuff because it puts in like word form so see player is not on cooldown but if i press e again player is on cooldown oh i left the extra space but anyway yeah now if i press e again not on cooldown if I, but if i spam it real quick player is on cooldown now wait about two more seconds and player is not on cooldown. That's that's an example of how you can make a cooldown on the server side and stuff, right? So yeah. Um I could um let me see. I could show you guys an example if y'all want. Let me Roblox files. Yeah. As you see, I have all my files and stuff. If you guys want access to any of these files, you guys can become a channel member. So if you get access, you see you got everything where I sang on, combat systems, gojos, all gojos attacks, everything. So say if like um let's see, let's see. Let me get a random attack. I'm gonna get like a, a random attack. Um let's see. Uh I wanna go honestly with the fireball attack. I don't know why. I just want I just really just wanna like I just I don't know. I just wanna do like a thing with the where's the fireball? Let me just search for it. Fireball. Did I not? Oh there it is, okay. So this is one of my attacks right from one of my other videos, right? You guys know all my scripts are very similar and stuff. So all of my ability scripts are generally look generally similar, right? So let me just set this up. You guys don't necessarily need to worry about like doing what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing this simply just to demonstrate to you like how like how it would look like on an actual like with an actual like attack and stuff and how you would integrate this with my other abilities if you wanted to do that. Because I'm pretty sure you guys want to do that because you guys have asked me about this before. So I can go here. You guys see I have everything. Um so the way I would want this, let's let's see, let's see. Okay, cast the rain cast, the animation player. Where's the dim? Oh, I don't have any damage. Oh. Oh wait, actually wait, no, that doesn't matter. I don't need damage. Okay, so the breeze, duration, the duration. Oh, okay, so duration. Perfectly fine. Okay. So to show the fireball and the duration end. Okay, so if that's the case, I'm pretty sure this will wait. And if that's the case, then alright. So what I can do is I can have right after here, I can have the I can have the cooldown. Okay, so say I wanted to have a cooldown. Not really a point in showing you guys how to make the cooldown um on the local side because it's pretty simple yeah like i said it's pretty simple you just you know have to go down here so i'm sure you guys on the service like i know it might be a little confusing here so let me go ahead and create a table local on cooldown is equal to special brackets right so pretty much when the player fires their remote event the first thing i want to do before i do literally anything is check if they're on cooldown 
So if table dot find and what is it? What would I put? Oh, on cooldown. On cooldown player dot name. Right then. So instead, I would recommend doing if not. So then you wouldn't need like an else if statement. Just do if not, which means the player just isn't on cooldown. Then I would just put an end right here. So if the player is not on cooldown, then I would do table dot insert insert the name into the table. So table dot insert on cooldown player dot name. Right. Once the name is inside, once the name is inside the table, um, pretty much, pretty much, I could have it. I could either do it at the end of the raycast, or I could do it at the end of the, at the end of, the, at the end of this. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's see. Let's see. Um, now I'm gonna do it at the end. Yeah, I'm gonna do it when the fireball, when the fireball has made contact and stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So pretty much, if the player, so I'm gonna do this, right? So. So pretty much, if if the player makes contact, well, actually no, that doesn't matter. I'm I'm stupid. I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of uh, can't attack, not on cooldown. So if the player is on cooldown, right? If I want to do it at the end, the animation player, the animation player will play. So I guess so I could end the cooldown. I could really do table to insert, and then the player is on cooldown, and then at the end of this, I could really say break cast then. At the end, let me see. Like right here, I think. Yeah. Do. Okay, let me see. Yeah. So when that finishes, I'm gonna do task that way. Then I can put my duration here. So say five seconds. Then do uh, table dot remove on cooldown. Uh, table dot find on cooldown player diamond. We can go ahead and test this, right? Not sure if this animation works for R15 or R6 though. Not sure if it's R6, then I'll have to switch. Okay, it's not working. Oh, F. Oh, oh, no, it is R15. Okay. See, I'm pressing F. Nothing's happening. But if I wait, boom. But if I spam F, wait, what? Wait, why is it, why is it doing that? Huh, that's weird. Let me see what I did wrong. If not table that finds, if not table that find, oh, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid. I put if not, if, wait, wait, actually, wait, no, 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 no. If the player is, if the player's name is not in the table, then I want their name to be in the table. Because if they're not, because if the name isn't found in the table. Wait, this actually doesn't make sense. Wait, what? If not table that font. Wait, I'm actually very confused. Not gonna lie. Wait, what? If not to that font. Let me see how many times it's been. And you guys probably have to debug as well when it comes to attacks. Each attack is different, even though my scripts are generally the same. It, it's generally different. Let me see. Oh, no, it is on cooldown. Oh, well, never mind. That was. Yeah, what? Oh, I get it. It worked the first time, but then for some reason after. Okay, so I see now. So for some reason, it worked the first time, but just the second time, the second time, it just didn't work. Okay. So, okay. So let me see. If Ray has the. So the player's name is not so the player if not table to find player name then table to insert. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me just try this on cooldown. Let me try printing. Let me try printing the table and stuff. You see? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Now I'm just using the attack. Okay so, okay, so it's full now. Then let me wait a couple seconds. It's like it's see that's weird because my name was in the table, but like Alright guys, I'm back. I figured out the issue and stuff. So apparently when I was kinda of doing it a little wrong. So I've done it like this before sometimes and stuff. So I recommend you do it like this. You do if table to find return, which means it'll just stop the function. Nothing else will run after this. If the player's name is final cooldown, then you insert the player's name in the table. 
because that means pretty much it means it's not and then you know test that way table remove pretty much i was kind of doing it like out of scope out of like out of the functions like kind of out of the function scope if that makes sense and stuff so yeah sorry uh, finally figured that out but anyway so as, as you guys can see i'm on cooldown then i'm spamming oh do one so that's how you set up cooldowns and stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions or help, you can leave in the comments or you can join my Discord server. The link is in the description. We're at a little bit over 500 members. Uh, I'm on over to 2,000 subscribers and stuff. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.